Hello and good morning. It's Phil Thatch and today I'm hanging around on the gravel road that leads to the Summit Knobs Equestrian Trail. I'm going to do some bird photography today and I have the Sony A6700 and their FE 200-600 lens. So I'm pretty excited about working with this today. But uh, this is Thursday and Monday of this week was a holiday and Heather and I went down to her parents' house and I took this same rig. We did some swimming and I also got a chance to work in a little bit of bird photography. So let's take a look at that first. Here's the first bird that I got a photograph of at Heather's parents' house. This is a brown thrasher, state bird of Georgia, and Heather's parents' house is in the state of Georgia, so that's appropriate. And it's on the chain link fence. Here's the next shot I got. This is a female northern cardinal. Same chain link fence. This is at the very back of their backyard and there's woods behind that, so it's a great place to find birds. Here we are again on the chain link fence. This is a male northern cardinal, and about 10 feet closer to me than the chain link fence is where they have their bird feeders set up, so the birds would come in and land on that chain link fence and then hit the feeder. Here is a white-breasted nuthatch, one of Heather's favorite birds. Some people call it the upside down bird because this is a good example of that in this picture. You often see it upside down on a tree. And I love the bokeh background. The 200-600 Sony lens really has beautiful bokeh in the background of this shot. Just like at Heather's parents' house, the first bird I saw this morning was a brown thrasher. Saw two or three of them, actually. I'm very happy with the way this photograph came out. I love all the colors and how soft everything looks. Not soft in terms of focus, just soft in terms of delicate colors and the blend of the colors. And there's the state bird of Georgia, but this time it was photographed in the state of Tennessee. Another thing about the Sony 200 to 600 lens, and this is something I don't find in the Canon 100 to 500, a lot of times there's some chromatic aberration when you shoot wide open, but go into Lightroom and enable profile corrections and it'll take care of that. But I don't have to do that with my Canon 100 to 500. Next, I saw another common bird, but this is one that I don't get photos of very often. I saw a gray catbird, which has a really amazing sounding call. Sounds just like a cat going meow. Here's the gray catbird, and I saw a number of these this morning, and this is the only one that I got a clear shot of, and look how much foliage is in front of it. So the other shots had even more foliage in front of the bird than this one, but I like the way this one turned out, even though it does look a little bit scraggly, which is kind of normal for this time of year. Well, now I have come to Harrison Bay State Park, where I'm going to cruise around and see if I can find any wildlife for birds to photograph, but so far it's been pretty slim pickings today. I had been struggling to find things to photograph all day long, but at Harrison Bay State Park it was the worst. I didn't take a single photograph and I went all over that park this morning. Come to a different location now, this little pond that's near Stanford Gap Wetlands, and not much happening here. Saw some dragonflies. Here's my favorite dragonfly photograph of the morning, and you know, the A6700 has insect autofocus, and it doesn't work as good as I would like. I would prefer it put a box right on the insect's eye, but instead, sometimes it puts a larger box around the insect's eye and the larger area of its torso. So getting the eye perfectly sharp takes a little bit of trial and error. Well, I walked around this field for a little while, did not see much. Like I say, I got the dragonflies. First bird that I saw, was a downy woodpecker and it was a long way away. I took some shots but I don't think any of them are any good. And I also saw a Carolina wren. Here's the Carolina wren photograph and this is very small in the frame and it's been cropped quite a bit but there's still enough detail left to make it a presentable photograph for you to see here in my video today. This is why I always keep these rubber boots, these Dunlop rubber boots in the car. I keep them in the trunk at all times. I used to carry them just for waterfalls, but anytime I have to trudge around in a field like this, even though this grass isn't super tall, I definitely would have gotten my feet wet if I didn't bring these boots. I'm here at another part of Standard for Gap Wetlands, and I don't know if you can see it in the background, just on the right side of the water, there's a great egret back there, which is something that you don't see a whole lot here. I mean, they are here, but you don't see them out at the dam and places that are easy to get great blue herons and things like that. So from a very long distance, a very not Florida distance, I made some great egret shots. 
here's the great egret. I made quite a few photographs of it, but the only one that I liked, or the one that I definitely liked the best, was this one with its neck extended. And some people call this the great white egret, but that's more words than is needed. The actual name is just great egret. Well, I'm back home now after a really difficult day of bird photography. The camera worked just fine. I was happy with the performance of the camera. What I struggled with was finding birds to photograph. So hopefully I got enough to where this video lasted more than five minutes, but uh, you'll be able to look down at the timer right now and see how long it lasted. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you like the content, give me a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell if you wanna see some more. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.